on some ground beef I did that uh, big inventory in my freezer and pulled out a bunch of ground beef to start cooking up and canning I'm making some more of that sloppy Joe mix that I did a while back and um, I'll tell you so I'm cutting my packages open with this knife here when I filmed that video, uh, there was a bandage on my wrist. Now, I said in the video that, you know, it was just a little incident with a kitchen tool. Well, this was the kitchen tool. It is an extremely sharp Wusthof knife. And I said in the video that it was no big deal. And to me, it really is no big deal. Look. If I, injure, if I injure myself and I can get the bleeding to stop, then it's not a big deal. If I don't have to go to the hospital, it's not a big deal. Um, I actually still have a mark right, if you can see it, on my wrist right there. Um, because I was cutting open packages of beef and this knife went in that far into my wrist. And I can judge how far it went in by how big the cut was on my wrist. So that told me how wide the blade was and so how far it went in. Um, everything was fine. The bleeding stopped and clearly I didn't hit anything important. So we're all good. So I don't think it was dishonest to say that it wasn't a big deal. Because like I said, if I don't have to go to the hospital, it's not a big deal. If I can take care of it myself, but then it's fine. So I'm not going to film the whole process of uh, making the sloppy joe mixture because I've already done a video on that. I'll link that down below if you are interested and you can get the recipe. Uh, we, my family loves this sloppy joe mix and um, it has gone quickly from my pantry. I do have a couple jars left, but for the most part, it has been snapped up. Often get questions from viewers who are newer to the channel as to where I got my speckled pans and bowls from. The enamelware that I have here came from a local store. It's a mercantile in Coleman, Alabama, and they actually do ship items that they have in stock. They do phone orders and things like that. They do have a, a few things on their website that you can order directly, um, but the brand is called Crow Canyon, and they do have some some pieces available uh, like through Amazon and such, but the Mercantile definitely has the most variety that I have ever seen, and I've never seen yellow on Amazon. Um, I've only ever seen it in I've only ever seen it in the mercantile. I do have a video where I talk about the mercantile and I interviewed the owner and gave you a tour of it. I will put a link to that down below if you're interested.
All right, you guys, so I have been busy canning, and you can probably hear my canner over there hissing. So something that I wanted to mention um, about Weck jars. I talked about these in my other video where I did the Sloppy Joes, like the full recipe, um, and all of that how I actually really like canning with these wet jars. They're a really thick walled, heavy um, kind of a jar. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, and there's really not too many negative aspects of canning with these other than the expense. They are a little bit costly, um, but there is one thing of note that might be a little bit of a downer. Um, and that is the width of the jar. So if you're doing a small batch of something, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. So I'm, I'm monitoring my jiggler over there. And that is the width of the jars. Now, if you're doing a small batch of something, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference, but if you are trying to get as many jars as you can into your canner, um, the width of these jars is going to limit the number of jars that you can get in your canner. Um, I mean, many of you know that if you're using a regular mouth jar, you're going to be able to get a few more in the canner than you would wide mouth jars. Well, here you can see the difference between a, a standard wide mouth um, pint jar and a weck jar. They are the Weck jar is significantly wider than the wide mouth jar. So because I was doing a batch and a half of this sloppy joe mixture today, I went ahead and after I had put in the first row of jars in my canner, I went ahead and swapped out um, a few of the Weck jars that I had filled for some regular mouth sized uh, pint jars. That way I could fit more into um, into my canner so that I could get all of it done. And doing that, I was able to get more jars in and I was able to can everything that I had made. If I was just doing a single batch of uh, the Sloppy Joe mix, it wouldn't have mattered. They would have all fit, no problem. But again, I was doing a batch and a half and uh, I needed a little more space. And so I needed the smaller jars. So. Other than that, you know, there's really not too much of a downside to using these jars. Um, I really enjoy canning with them. I think they're very easy to use. Uh, you just have to make note of the size of the jar. Not only the volume when you are converting these uh, metric size jars to uh, use in your American uh, recipes, but also how many of these will actually fit in your canner when you're canning. And of course it's also going to depend on which variety of these you're using. Um, just like the wide mouth mason jars, you can't fit as many as the regular mouth mason jars. Um, these wet jars come in different sizes and shapes. So of course if you're using the taller cylindrical types of ones, you would be able to fit more than these, um, I think they're called a mold shape. Yeah. So just something to make note when you're using Weck jars for canning. All right, 
So I have got 12 pints of Sloppy Joe mix. And as you can see, they are still boiling like crazy, super hot. Um, I think it looks like I did have a little bit of seepage on one of my jars. And I'm thinking it was one of the top uh, mason jars. But of course, I'll check the seals tomorrow. I'll go through, um, make sure every jar is actually fully sealed. And I'll try and figure out which one had the seepage. And personally, I'll use that jar first. I, you know, I mean, even if the jar is sealed, I just, if I know that there was some seepage on one, I'm gonna try and use that one first. That's just the way I do things. So I am hearing the clink of the metal lids popping and sealing. Now that is one of the things you don't have with the WEC jars because the lids are glass. You don't get that, that sound, that tink sound. However, like I talked about in the other video, um, you have these little tabs and when the jar suctions down, these tabs point down in a downward direction. So like this one right here has not yet sealed, it's still kind of pointed up but all the rest of them have a downward angle, and so they are in progress. Looking good. Now I still have that turkey that I mentioned in my other video um, thawing out in my refrigerator, and so tomorrow I'm going to check it and see if it's close to being thawed out yet, um, because when it is thawed out, I'm going to roast it and I'm going to can that up. So I've got all of that ground beef that I just saved as the Sloppy Joes. The turkey will be next. Once I get that turkey finished, then I will move on to the next thing. I have um, several recipes that I want to do, that I want to um, prepare and can. And so I, I don't know that I'll be doing big batches of things like I did the Sloppy Joes today. We just really like that Sloppy Joe mixture and so I did um, like I said earlier, a batch and a half of that. Um, everything else I'm planning on just doing like regular batches of things. Now I mentioned that I have a canning collaboration coming up in March and I haven't announced who all is participating yet because I have a couple people who are still kind of working out um, how many, how many recipes they're going to do and if for sure they're going to be able to do it. But once we get that in ink, then I will make the announcement and share with you all of the great channels that are going to be participating as well as some fun details to go along with this collaboration. But I can tell you what it's going to be called. The name of it is going to be March Canning Madness because it is the Mad Dash to get everything canned that you want to get canned before garden season comes in. Whether it is things that you just want to add to your pantry shelf or if you're making or if you're needing to make room in your freezer to prepare for garden season that is coming. Whatever it is, whatever people are wanting to can get canned in the month of March, this is going to be the time to do it. And so there is going to be all different kinds of recipes, lots of staple recipes, things that people are needing to make room in the freezer for, um, or with, I should say. And so I am looking forward to seeing what everybody is making and sharing that with all of you guys. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me here in the kitchen. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm, and I'll talk to y'all next time.